we determined that the executive protection team did not have policies in place to regulate or guide its operations. A call for more supervision over those protecting the New Orleans mayor. The Office of Inspector General just released a report. That's right. It's raising concern over a lack of procedure in place for the mayor Cantrell's executive detail. WDSU investigative reporter Cassie Sherm now live in the studio with how much this is costing taxpayers, Cassie. Well, guys, we're looking at more than $414,000 in tax dollars were spent last year on three officers and a sheriff to be on the mayor's executive detail. In this report, the inspector general found a lack of protocols in place could have added unnecessary overtime and extra pressure on NOPD. The lack of policies and procedures contributed to the ineffective use of NOPD's already limited resources. Inspector General Ed Michelle says he started looking into the mayor's executive detail because it's an important job. And the mayor is critical to all city operations. The mayor, no matter who the mayor is, has to be protected. But Michelle found there were no written policies, procedures, or standards governing her executive protection when it comes to protecting her or billing the city. So if there were no policies or procedures put in place, do you think there was any oversight over this team? No. He also found the mayor's executive team has never prepared any threat assessments prior to mayor's events in speaking engagements, meaning the city could have been paying for more officers than needed. For instance, the current size of the detail is four, but if they were to conduct thorough threat assessments, both pre and post engagements that the mayor has, they may find the need for only two police officers assigned to the detail. So it's absolutely essential to have a plan in place, have a threat assessment, and to gauge the risk facing the mayor. Even with the long shifts, some 16-hour days, the inspector general also found that they had very little trainings um, and uh, there were no documented examples of trainings to ensure their proficiency going forward. He isn't the only one questioning the mayor's executive detail. Public Integrity Bureau investigators and leaked interview tapes questioned former and current details. So travel would change from 12 hours to 16 hour day, correct? Correct. Is that written anywhere? No. Okay. How did you know that automatically that was a 16 hour day when doing travel times? Because that's what was told to me when I came on the team. By who? By whom? By the team members, Lewis, Rob. So had, did a supervisor ever tell you this? No. Documents show the mayor's executive team would even clock in full days while Cantrell was out of town hundreds of miles away. Would you guys still work 12 hours even if the mayor wasn't here? Yes. Okay. Because you're at her leisure, she may call you and text you and say she needs something done. Both the Bureau and Inspector General also questioned what some of the officers were doing on the clock. So whatever you think an assistant might do, sometimes, more times than not, we would be doing that as well. Former member Christy Johnson Stokes also told the Bureau she would run errands, pick up last minute gifts, and take the mayor's daughter to and from appointments and classes. It's a fine line between being executive protection and being an assistant. I think the main thing for the team, especially the guys, was holding that purse. <laughs> like we need our hands, mm -hmm. you know, like we're not supposed to be holding your bag, but you, you know, you might need an assistant for that. Many of the functions and duties of those security team members are um, more of a personal assistant. Watchdog Raphael Gonechi with Metropolitan Crime Commission is also concerned. That's not something that you need uh, a commissioned police officer to do, particularly at a time that we're experiencing a manpower crisis in the city of New Orleans. It is at my discretion and it is something that is necessary for me to do my job. After the tapes were leaked last month, the mayor was asked whether her executive team should be used to hold purses and run errands. I asked her that question again this week. Yes, I will continue to utilize my executive protection detail just as every other mayor prior to me, and it's never gone in, in, under any scrutiny at all, and it's very concerning that me, this is the issue. We made a public records request for the previous mayor's detail costs and we're told there's no records that exist. The cost of this security team are a luxury that the city can afford. Now comparing the $415,000 New Orleans is paying for four security details to other cities, Denver, which is nearly double the population, spends on average nearly $700,000 on seven officers to protect the mayor. San Jose, with a million residents, spends on average $200,000 per year on one detail for the mayor.
The $415,000 spent in New Orleans doesn't include council members with one executive detail and the city attorney's detail. Goenechi believes they should all have to share to help add more boots to the ground. If the mayor or city council members need somebody to drive them to an event, uh, then there's a pool of officers. It would be, I think, more productive and more cost effective and would produce greater benefits to public safety. Michelle says right now it's important to keep the mayor safe. That's why he wrote a list of recommendations to NOPD. The recommendations that we made will ensure going forward that this $415,000 expenditure for the city will be done properly. It's a lot of money. Now the OIG's office says NOPD will implement all of his recommendations and one of those recommendations is making sure that the mayor isn't using these officers to run errands and things like that. And we did reach out to the mayor's office, but they have yet to respond. All right, Cassie, thank you.